Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Aaron the Excited Wanderer and today I'm taking you on a tour of the awesome Warner Brothers Harry Potter studio in Tokyo. So grab your broomsticks and let's kick off. First and foremost, let's get the name right. It is Warner Brothers Studio Tour Tokyo, the making of Harry Potter. Essentially, it is a captivating experience that transports you into the mesmerizing realm of JK Rowling's Wizarding World. It is a chance to step behind the scenes of the iconic Harry Potter books and films to witness the magic that brought the beloved characters and settings to life. Before this attraction, if you wanted to live out your wizarding fantasies, you'd have to go all the way down south of the country to Osaka, where you'll find the amazing Universal Studios Japan and in that part, there's the area called the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. But since Tokyo gets its fair share of tourists, it makes sense to have a Harry Potter attraction in the city as well. So you're probably wondering, what's the difference between this one in Tokyo and the one that's in Universal Studios Japan? The biggest difference that I can tell you is that the Harry Potter Studio in Tokyo is not a theme park with rides. In fact, if you've been to the original Harry Potter Studios in London, then you'll know what to expect from this one in Tokyo. The studio tour is more like an exhibition, where you can see stuff that's been featured in books and in the movies, like posters on the wall, magazines, wands, and costumes. You'll move from one set to another and it's so easy to picture yourself as a character in the movie, making this studio tour such an amazing and immersive experience. You'll also be able to go behind the scenes and learn how filmmaking magic typically happens. You'll see how they cut and combine scenes, produce certain sound effects, and so much more. It's all stuff that you wouldn't be able to normally see unless of course you were actually working on the set when the movie was being made. Here's a tip for all the muggles out there. I would highly recommend watching or re-watching some if not all of the Harry Potter films before coming to this tour. You'll be able to enjoy it way more if you understand the scene and the stuff that happens around it in the story. Because if you don't get the scene, you're just going to walk by without knowing what it's about. I know, I know, there's a lot of movies to catch up on, but trust me on this, your efforts will not be in vain. Getting to the Harry Potter studio is really easy because it is situated in the heart of Tokyo. It is 20 minutes by train from Shinjuku Station. So as long as you're staying somewhere in Tokyo, you're never too far away from coming here and enjoying the experience it has to offer. As of today, you need to make an online reservation in advance to secure your tickets. They don't sell the tickets at the studio itself. This is because the studio can only hold so many people and they've implemented the system so that it doesn't get overcrowded and ruining the experience for everyone. A quick check on the website today which is the 7th of August when this video was made shows that only tickets from the 21st of August are available. So you want to keep this in mind when you're planning for your trip to Japan and if you're interested in checking this place out. I guarantee that you're going to have an amazing experience whether you're a Harry Potter fan or not. Prices of tickets start at 6300 yen or 44 US dollars for adults, 5200 yen or 36 US dollars for teens between 12 to 17 years old, and finally 3800 yen or 27 US dollars for kids ages 4 and up. Children younger than 4 years old enter for free. You are also able to enter the studio as early as 1 hour before the time of your reservation. So let's say you booked a 10am tour, you can be allowed into the area as early as 9am or 9.15. So you'll have more time to walk around at your own pace and explore as much as possible before the tour starts. You'll also have the option to book an audio guide which you can use during the tour to get even more information. The audio guide comes in English so it's useful for those who don't speak or understand Japanese.
You can check out my link to Kluk's website that's at the bottom of this video in the descriptions. Not only can you buy tickets to the Harry Potter Studio Tour at a 5% discount when you use my discount code, but you can also throw in a 24-hour Tokyo subway ticket that allows you to take unlimited rides on the Tokyo subway for 24 hours. This is usually a popular option as people will continue exploring Tokyo once they're done with the tour. So make sure to check out my link in the description box below after watching this video. One of the highlights of the tour actually starts in the garden area right before you enter the studio. While the tour itself takes place inside that modern looking building right there, but there's a lot of stuff in the gardens to check out too. Once you've entered the building, you can store any bags in the coin lockers, freshen up in the washrooms, and gather at the starting point. If you book the audio guide when reserving your tickets online, you can pick them up here as well. Another tip that I have for you is that you'll be using a QR code to enter the tour. But if you show the code to the staff at the desk, you'll be able to get paper tickets with iconic scenes from the series on them. You don't have to use these paper tickets, but they make for great souvenirs, so make sure to keep them somewhere safe before starting the tour. The other great reason to arrive early is so that you have time to check out the shops and restaurants before starting the tour. You can see how they are beautifully designed, identical to what you would see in the films. If I were you, I'd skip breakfast and I'd come here a little earlier to have a Harry Potter themed meal. And while the food is delicious, you can expect prices to be a little bit more expensive than restaurants outside. You'll also see plenty of people wearing wizard robes here, so don't be afraid to bring your own outfit and your own wand if you have one. Once it's time, the tour guide will take you and everyone else in the same time slot as you together inside. The tour will take about 4 hours from start to finish, but if you take your time to look at all of the details, do some shopping, and taking loads of pictures, you could very easily spend up to 6-7 to seven hours here because there's just so much to see and admire. Halfway through the tour, you'll be able to grab some food at the Backlog Cafe. There's more Harry Potter themed food to try here, but the decor is not as impressive as the one of the great dining hall at the entrance. Either way, you can stop for a quick snack or drink here if you want, then continue exploring once you're done. It's best to eat here if you need to because you can't come back once you've left the area by going into other parts of the studio tour. But before leaving the area, right outside the Backlog Cafe, you'll find the Butterbeer Bar. For 1100 yen or about 8 US dollars, you can get yourself a mug of butterbeer that's often shown in the films and described in the books. And once you're done with that, you can bring the mug home with you as a souvenir. As you continue along the tour, at one point you'll arrive at King's Cross Station where you'll see the famous 9 and 3 quarter platform. Other than being able to admire that and the Hogwarts Express up close, you'll also find a place that lets you get your very own acceptance letter to Hogwarts. Unfortunately, this is going to cost you extra at 2600 yen or about 20 US dollars per letter. Feel free to share your experience if you've already been on this tour before or if you have any questions, then let me know down in the comments. If you've liked this video, then I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel to catch more of my videos coming your way. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.